Now then, my name is Ryan Central and in today's video we are going to be looking at all of Moses' legendary class mods, what they do, how you should build around them, and generally just tearing them on which is the best to worst. When you first get to endgame, which no doubt some of you are at now, or even just blitzing for it at this point, you might be wondering how to build your character, and I believe one of the best areas to start, especially if you're a complete beginner to Borderlands, is with legendary class mods. Not only do they provide extra talent points in certain areas, something I do want to go over very early in this video, but the legendary class mods also give you extra perks like you're seeing on screen that almost act like exotics in Destiny. And each of the legendary class mods for everybody coerces you into a particular playstyle. So in this video, we're gonna go over Moe's and all five of her legendary mods. I believe all of the Vault Hunters have five legendary mods each, apart from Flak, who of course are six, because they are, of course, amazing and the best. We also have the pet to bear in mind, I suppose it would be. Just as a quick PSA, whilst some of these legendary mods are really good with the perks that they provide, it's definitely worth noting that epic mods or even rare mods can be better than legendary ones in certain cases. And it all depends on the extra skill points that you get. You namely want to be looking out for ones like this one. On screen you're seeing a class mod for Moe's that puts a point into redistribution, a talent where you can only put one point in anyway, so adding this class mod doubles the effect. The original effect is when you score a critical hit you regenerate ammo for a few seconds. The ammo regeneration is 5% of your magazine and the duration is 3 seconds. You equip this mod, you double the effect, with the ammo regeneration being 10% of your magazine. The duration still says 3 seconds, but it could be 6. And there's loads of different class mods that you want to be keeping an eye out that can have their effect doubled including capstones, which are the top tier talents. So if you get a rare class mod, don't just instantly try and bin it. It could be really good and often overlooked. In a general sense, the legendary class mods tend to be better, but you have to keep an eye out for class mods. You really do, especially with the talents that they provide. But without further ado, let's go over all five of Moses' legendary class mods, starting with Bloodletter, which I've rated three out of five. If Moses would be healed, she gains shields instead. If she would regenerate health, she also gains shield regeneration. Now on the face of it, this doesn't look all that good and it might look a bit bizarre and you might be thinking, how is this good in any way? But that's because it's very complementary to the shield of retribution build, both in the perk that it provides, but also the additional stats. Specifically going into free talents, that you can see are added onto by the class mod. The first is Thin Red Line. We've highlighted this so many times, you probably already know what's coming. A portion of your health is reserved and cannot be restored, but it's added to your maximum shield instead. You pair this with Desperate Measures. Moses' gun damage is increased depending on how low your health is. The lower your health, the greater the increase. And then of course you have Phalanx Doctrine, which kind of acts on its own, but it increases your maximum shield, your gun damage, whenever you get a kill and there's no stack limit. So you're trying to get as many stacks of this as possible. This is the only class mod that really goes into the Shield of Retribution tree and into this particular playstyle, meaning that if you have this, you can make quite a unique build, which is very different to the other class mods that we're gonna go over. I'll explain when we get there. This build is strong in itself, but you can pair this with some really good shields and some really good artifacts to make it even stronger. For example, you have the Deathless artifact, which I don't have yet, which reserves all but one HP, gives you 100% shield capacity, increases the recharge rate and decreases the recharge delay. It puts you down to one health, increasing your damage that you do because you're really low health and gives you extra shield and survivability. The reason why I've rated this sort of middle of the pack just a bit better than average is because whilst the additional stats it provides are really good for that playstyle, decreasing your health, decreasing your damage, increasing your shields, the perk itself doesn't really add too much other than quality of life elements and a bit more survivability, which of course is the name of the game in this Shield of Rep skill tree. If you were to be healed by health packs or health regen from your teammates, you gain shields instead, making it so your shields are constantly as high as they can be, which is pretty decent. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad, but the perk itself doesn't really provide any more to the playstyle other than survivability, where I feel that like it could add a little bit more damage perhaps in certain areas. It's really hard to say, but I do think that this class mod is pretty good, but only if you are running that Shield of Retribution build. In regards to the builds that you're running, you don't really need to make a specific build to work with a class mod, but that feels like it's generally the case for Bloodletter. You can't really run this with like Demolition Woman or Bottomless Mags. You kind of need to go into the talents that it's asking you to go into in order to get any effective use out of it. It's pretty decent. It's strong 
point second in my rankings of how strong it is. But if you're not running the Shield of Retribution tree, it is utterly pointless. And the perk on it is just more quality of life than, oh my god, this makes my build amazing, if that makes sense. But it's certainly how it compares to the next class mod, Blastmaster. The longer Moe's goes without reloading, the more splash damage she deals up to 100%. I've rated this a 6 out of 5. It is possibly the best class mod in the game, not only for Moe's, but for everybody. Where does it work? Everywhere. Killing bosses, proving grounds, circle of slaughter, mayhem free leveling. It's one of the strongest for just sheer DPS, and it's ridiculous of the stuff that you can do. You've seen the gameplay in the background in the end game Moe's video, but I wanted to highlight it again. It complements the strongest build in the game, not only with the extra talents, but its perks too. One of the strongest builds for Moe's is that Demolition Woman Bottomless Mags hybrid, where you're throwing out a lot of grenades. You have basically infinite grenades a good amount of the time, but also the splash damage that you can do, the ammo that you have on guns. It's just damage all of the time, and it's crazy. Crazy how well this class mod synergizes with it, not only with the extra points, but the perk itself. It even sort of spells it out for you. The longer Moe's goes without reloading, hint hint, bottomless mags, the more splash damage that she deals, hint hint, demolition woman. It's really pushing you towards that strongest build and going, have fun. And when that build itself is too good not to run, this class mod also becomes too good not to run. Where isn't it very good? Of course, much like anything, it does have its weaknesses. The issue is because there's a big focus on bottomless mags and demolition woman, you do lose out on a little bit of tankiness because you're not specking into shield of retribution, meaning that your survivability is a little bit rocky. And because of all of the splash explosive damage that you're doing, you often down yourself. And that could be a bit of a problem and a little bit annoying if you're not careful. Not to mention that some weapons don't necessarily work if you're running in with the Butcher for example, you're not dealing any splash damage. Your weapon doesn't do any explosive damage therefore you're not really seeing the benefit as you would with say a Flacker or just a normal TOG shotgun. It's hard to say whether the splash damage increase affects grenades. I would assume that it does but it's very vague in typical gearbox fashion. But of course if you're doing a lot of splash damage there you want pretty good grenades that can do a lot of splash damage themselves in order to keep proc crits and all that it just this whole class mod lends itself so nicely to the strongest build that Moz has available to her that you realistically can't go wrong unless you're not playing this playstyle. But even then, because it has a focus on going without reloading or doing splash damage, it's good for builds that aren't specifically focused in those areas. Maybe you're combining it with Shield of Retribution in some capacity, this still is the best class mod because of what it provides to you with extra damage increase. Some most players would say it's amazing that she has this kind of utility. Some most players would say it's bad because one build style for her really dwarfs all of the other ones. And I would agree there to an extent. But if you do get this, congratulations. You've just got one of the best class mods in the game. Have fun with it. And it is a lot of fun. The whole playstyle is ridiculous. So I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. Next up, I wanted to talk about Minesweeper, where landing a critical hit has a 25% chance to drop a micro grenade that explodes, but it doesn't say how much damage it does. What I like about this class mod is it's very flexible with whatever build that you're running. So long as you're dealing critical hits, either with grenades or normal weapons, you have a chance to drop micro grenades that explode. Of course, that means that it's great for mobbing and surprisingly decent damage overall, it seems. It's hard to tell exactly how much damage that they do, but it felt like it made some form of impact at least. It suits Moses' playstyle as a whole, no matter what you're doing. And there is plenty that you can do with it, but I still don't think it's as good as Blastmaster. Hence why I'm rating it a 3 out of 5. The areas where it doesn't work as well, it seems that the small grenades do physical damage and not elemental. So it's not good if you're running Mayhem 3 and you're trying to run an elemental build because you want those elemental modifiers which come at the cost of physical damage. Because it drops grenades, it's also not very good for bosses like Grave Warden because the grenades will just sort of fall off of him. And it's not really good for flacker builds where you're not really focusing on doing crit damage and you're not really hitting critical shots. It means that you're not proccing these grenades at all, making it so it's not very impactful certainly not in comparison to Blastmaster as we just highlighted. Like I said when it comes to build synergy anything can work with this mod which is nice there is a big focus of course on grenades going off the modifiers so it's certainly pushing you towards Demolition Woman bottomless mags a little bit but certainly not to the same case as Blastmaster with the explosive reload damage that you want to be doing. So you can invest into Shield of Retribution and it can work just as well and it's just good for a non-specific playstyle for a little extra damage. If you're not running the Shield of Retribution, this is a second place in regards to all of the other class mods, in my opinion at least. Now we go to the weaker ones, and I mean fairly weak. 
even though I want to enjoy them. Penultimately, we have Rocketeer, which I've rated 2 out of 5. Auto Bear now lasts the rest of the duration that Iron Bear had left. If Merz gets out early, removes any refunded cooldown for exiting early. Just to be clear on the latter bit, it means that if you get out instantly, you don't get a really fast cooldown, you have to wait the full time anyway. But the whole idea is it's meant to synergize with a talent in a Demolition Woman tree called Auto Bear. After you exit the mech, it will remain deployed in place for a short time. Whilst it remains active, it will target and attack nearby enemies until its duration ends, then it will charge at an enemy and self-destruct. This usually would last 15 seconds, but of course with this class mod, it's increased to beyond maybe two minutes. It's ridiculous how long the mech is there for. And the interesting thing about this is it makes it act more like a turret of sorts, which I found really cool. You know, considering that she is meant to be the gunner class, it would be nice to have Iron Bear act more like a turret, in the same vein as Roland and Axton in previous games. But because of the mayhem scaling affecting the Iron Bear mech, it makes it so this build just isn't very strong. Even though it's very fun, creative, and I find very interesting and I wanted to play more. It just doesn't work as well as I was hoping. It also depends on whatever weapons that you are running with the mech. I found that the normal miniguns tend to provide the most consistent options because of course. Some of the rockets that lock on didn't lock on properly so they just fire into the air and stuff. I wasn't spending too much time to be honest working out which weapons were the best. But it was really fun to just sort of put the mech down, plug it there on a mission in the background, like when we're protecting Atlas HQ with the turrets. Sometimes it does a good amount of damage against squishies and the like, but running into badass mobs, it just didn't provide too much. Not to mention the whole summoning the mech and instantly getting out was a little bit boring. It'd be nice if Gearbox added some form of talent where you don't need to do that, where you would just summon the Iron Bear as an extra summon, like a turret or a pet or whatever, just for that amount of time, instead of having to summon it, get into it and then instantly get out. But if the Iron Bear mech was made stronger and scaled better for the Mayhem modes, like we covered in the Endgame modes video, I could see this rise into a 3 or a 4. And also it'd be a nice way in order to make the mech a lot more exciting, because I think it's a bit of a problem that Moe's doesn't really want to or need to use her ability. I don't think any other Borderlands heroes had that in the past, really. The duration is pretty ridiculous with how often it's up, like I mentioned, but certainly in comparison to Moe's and her personal class mods, it doesn't come close to Blastmaster. It doesn't come close to the three that we've just mentioned. Not to mention that building around the Iron Bear in regards to talents is kind of vague. It's hard to know what is the best build to run with it, but of course, the more points that you put into stock when it comes to the mech, the less points that you have to focus on yourself and the damage and survivability that you have. This could be a diamond in the rough. It provides a unique playstyle and I really like it, but because of how Iron Bear scales, it's just not worth it at this point. But funnily enough, this isn't the worst class mod that Moe's has, because that's the Trooper, which I've rated 1.5 out of 5. Iron Bear fuel use is down 50% with the duration increased 50%. Now this again would be really good if Iron Bear wasn't so bad at scaling for higher mayhems. I literally do more damage outside of the mech than in, even when specking for the mech. The duration doesn't make much difference at all as well. I'd say the main reason why this class mod sucks is because the duration and the fuel use has such diminishing returns. It doesn't make much difference because you're likely to lose the mech from damage that you take in that time as opposed to the duration running out. You can stay in the suit for a good amount of time, I'm showing you exactly how long on screen with a timer, and it is fun to stay in the mech and use some of those abilities, but the mech just isn't stronger. The guns, no matter what you're using and the arguments that you have, just seem really underpowered in comparison to other options outside of the mech, and for an ability I'd say that's pretty bad. If Gearbox buffed the mech, then again this would be great, I would love to see a 100% Iron Bear uptime build, where you have a long duration but a really short cooldown once you get out of the mech. But right now, it's one of Moses' weakest aspects, and this class mod is built around one of Moses' weakest aspects. The fuel increase really never gets used, you end up dying before then, making the bonus really obsolete. Similar to the Rocketeer build as well, you don't have a straightforward direction in terms of talents to spec into the mech, and it doesn't really provide you much synergy either. I have no doubt that you can min-max this build a lot better than what I did, but as it currently stands, this is the weakest, and it's also pretty boring in what it provides. Like I mentioned, if the mech gets buffed, then of course this will be made a lot stronger, but it must be something on Gearbox's list to change at this point. But just to go over them in regards to best to worst, Blastmaster is the strongest, Bloodletter and Minesweeper are joint at 3 out of 5. It really does depend on what you're doing and what you're running. Rocketeer is a 2 out of 5, can be a 3 or a 4 out of 5 if the mech is improved, and Trooper is the lowest at 1.5 out of 5. 
that's all of the class mods. Like I said, you can just run normal class mods and not need to worry about it too much. But I feel when you're making the perfect Moe's build, starting off with one of these class mods, Blastmaster, hint hint, is the better way to go about it. But let me know what you'd rate these class mods as. What Vault Hunter would you like me to cover next? Going over their class mods and their general playstyles and what you should expect with them. Or maybe you'd like me to cover certain weapons, manufacturers, anything like that. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching till the end. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care. See you soon.